Call to order and roll call for the Burn Hills Park District Board of Commissioners, regular board meeting. Roll call, please. Commissioner Robbins? Here. Commissioner Moline? Here. Commissioner Ballou? Present. Commissioner Kessler? Here. President Thorhofer? Here. If we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. First item on the agenda this evening is the omnibus vote agenda. Items under the omnibus vote agenda are considered routine and or non-controversial and will be applied by one, approved by one motion. If a separate vote on any one item is desired, it will be pulled from the omnibus vote agenda and voted on separately. Items included in the omnibus vote agenda for this evening are the minutes of the regular board meeting dated November 17, 2016, and the payables less Granger and payroll through December 15, 2016 in the amount of $1,490,408.36. Motion to approve. Second motion. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Commissioner Ballou? Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Commissioner Moline? Yes. Commissioner Kessler? Yes. President Dorhofer? Yes. Next item on the agenda is the welcome to visitors guests. If I could invite Yuri Zabalka from the Vernon Hills Lions Club to the podium. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the Vernon Hills Lions Club, I would uh, first of all like to thank the board for uh, having us here in attendance tonight. Vernon Hills Lions Club has been here as a part of Vernon Hills for over 30 years. And as such, we uh, started out our journey, if you will, in those first 20 years or so, visiting different local establishments where we uh, worked out a meeting space on a, uh, on a fairly irregular basis. And as of about 10 to 15 years ago, we were fortunate enough to have reached an intergovernmental uh, agreement with the village slash park district to be able to utilize the Lashen Center, which has worked out extremely well for us. We appreciate that. Knowing of the uh, situation with the Lashen Center and with the addition of the Sullivan Center that's going on, uh, we, the members of the Vernon Hills Lions Club, and we've got a number of our members with us tonight, would like to make a donation to the Vernon Hills Park District for their generosity to us as a club uh, in providing space for us, giving us an opportunity to place to meet, not only for our regular meetings, but for a few other special events from time to time, and helping us to stay visible in the village of Vernon Hills. So with that, Mr. President, uh, it's my pleasure on behalf of our club to present you with a check for $10,000, which would uh, help suit out, if you will, the, uh, the boardroom uh, of the new Sullivan Center uh, boardroom and uh, enable the Lions Club to uh, continue to meet on a regular basis. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, Mr. President, one more thing. Oops. This is the real tick. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to try to catch the airwash? Is it possible yeah. for us to yeah. bring our club yeah. up here? To, I don't know if you want to bring it up. Board members, members down. Down. to have that opportunity. Come on, everybody in here. Well, it's been a wonderful well, partnership, and we appreciate that. Sure. I'm not sure, but... <laughs> 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 yeah, because then you've got to Yeah, we know our place. We're going to go right over here. Oh, oh, oh. It's going to be easier with the logo. Yeah. It's like a parade. you got the banner in front. <laughs> you can use the different levels of the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. That means that I get to be on the high. Yes. 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 Yeah. So 
Marshal Geary. Wait. Wait. He's got a few more words there. He's got some words. Got more words. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to take a little, little bit side note from what we normally do. We usually don't comment in public comment period, but uh, obviously special circumstances. First of all, thank you very, very much mm -hmm. to you, your entire club, uh, not only for the, for the generous donation, which is just unbelievable, but also for all the work you do for the community, the partnership we have, the village. Um, you truly are an asset to this community. You're part of what makes Vernon Hills a great place to live and a great place to be in. So, on behalf of the board, on behalf of the community, thank you very much for all you do and everything your club does. It's it's amazing. Thank you so much, Mr. President. That means a lot to us. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is financial reports for the period ending March, November 30th. Uh, Marlon, any changes to the financial reports? They're on file. All good. Thank you. We're good to go. Next item on the agenda: reports and communication. Executive Director Jeff Bush. Jeff. staff would be moving in <clears throat> and then after that we would look to move our admin team out of Lashen into uh, uh, into the uh, current space that's occupied by the recreation staff the gymnasium uh, we've I was hoping John Emsher from WB Olson was here um, hopefully he'll still show up uh, we've we've had a little bit of a setback in terms of um, acceptable uh, moisture <coughs> readings uh, off the off the floor before they can apply the the wood surface. Um, we do not expect that the uh, number uh, that the manufacturer is looking for is rating out about 96 percent. It needs to be less than 85 for the manufacturer to warrant the, the product. Uh, it's a one year warranty. We took readings of the existing gym, which is 25 years old, and we got readings of 96 percent. We've seen no problem with the gym floor in that area, obviously, for the last 25 years. We've asked for another independent consultant to come in uh, at their cost to get a second reading and a second opinion before we green light the application of the floor. We, we can't wait till June, and it may not even happen, knowing what we've had uh, existing, that it's never met that, that required measurement. So it's kind of... It's, it's really something that between James and I has dumbfounded us in terms of why, you know, this this particular manufacturer won't warrant when they know everything else within the confines of the existing has been acceptable. But it's just the way it's going to be. Uh, we've even looked at potentially throwing them out and bringing on a new vendor. Uh, the time frame to do all that and rebid it would put us into the spring. We just don't have the time. I, and it wouldn't necessarily mean that a potential new vendor coming in wouldn't, wouldn't do the same thing. So uh, hopefully within the next 72 hours, we'll get some kind of response back uh, on this independent <coughs> meeting. And then uh, probably early next week, we'll, we'll sit with the contractor again and, uh, and, and move forward on this so we can get the gym up and running. Um, we're just kind of cleaning up some last minute things at, uh, at Deer Path Park. We've got, uh, uh, the fence company, uh, basically a lot of fence work uh, in and around the tennis courts that still has to be completed. They're going to be out uh, Tuesday of next week, weather permitting. Uh, the dugouts are supposed to go up within two weeks, and then uh, that pretty much completes a lot. Of it. And then we're, we'll, we'll have them back probably in the spring. They still got some ball field cleanup that they've got to do. Um, you know, if you haven't, I think we were talking a little earlier, the park staff has been really working on putting in a lot of time with getting our ice rinks up. We've got two independent ice rinks that are open as of today. Um, and then staffing-wise, um, you know, Tom and I have talked at the holiday weekends, uh, the, the Christmas holiday, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, we will not be staffing 
uh, a facility, but the following working weekend and New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, we will staff it. Um, on New Year's Eve, we're a little shorter hours. Typically, we're open one one to nine, that we have a nice attendant out there. Sled Hill does not, not need anything. Um, you're gonna, we're going to ask that you approve the tax levy ordinance tonight for uh, uh, for tax year 2016. As you know, it's always a prior year uh, that you're approving. Um, let's see what else. Uh, we can talk about District 73 under your commissioner reports if you want for the recent meeting that the two of you attended. Um, the Pulte project which uh, you know we've communicated to the village through their request in terms of response for uh, developer fees um, we're still waiting on an answer back from the village in terms of um, how that number and what that number is going to be if you recall we responded uh, the developer came back with a um, I think it was four hundred thousand and then we we are the board consensus than 600,000, so we're still waiting to hear from the village on how that's going to um, kind of respond out. Um, lastly, and I know Jess didn't mention it earlier, but I, I thought it was a pretty significant contribution that we got from one of our local companies, Learning Resource Center, which is over in Continental Business Park, and uh, they donated a boatload of toys to our child care, our daycare center, and our preschool program. A lot of new, good educational toys, which I thought was really great. Um, so that that's the end of my report. I just want to wish everybody a happy uh, holiday season, healthy new year. Be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Yeah. Commissioner Roberts. Jeff, I was a little confused when you were throwing out the percentages on the that flooring. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned 96% and, and rating that oh, I see. It should be a lower rating. It's got to be less than eighty-five. Right. They just want, you know, they don't want any moisture potentially to come up through. We, we, they put all the correct vapor barriers for the um, for the specification. Um, so the, the contractor's saying maybe you had a bad concrete pour, and that's why you're getting water. And then when you talk to the concrete guys, they're like. There's no way we did a bad pour. We didn't put, you know, so it's a lot of back and forth. Um, there's there's good ventilation. James and I feel very confident. Again, when we took the existing gym and it's the same reading, we've never had a problem there. Uh, I think it would be different. I think I'd be coming to you if it was a 10 or 15 year warranty and you were a little more at risk. But for a year, it's not worth the, you know, it's worth the risk, if you will, to, to keep it moving. Any other questions for Jeff? Thank you very much. Next, mm -hmm. Finance and HR Superintendent, Marla DeVico. Marla? Good evening. Okay, the district's uh, annual treasures report has been completed, um, filed with the uh, clerk's office in Lake County, and the notice was published in the Pioneer Press of its availability. So it is available in our business office if any resident or non resident would like to see um, annually how we spend our money. For um, human resources, um, we're continuing to do a lot of uh, hiring. Um, we want to welcome Carrie Pillman to Park Maintenance. She um, will basically be replacing uh, Dira, and uh, she just started with us earlier in December. Um, she's been in uh, Park Maintenance for over 15 years. She worked at the Zion Park District um, and Liberty Be Libertyville High School. And um, she will be training with Dira until Dira's retirement at the end of the month. Hills High School. Hills High School. Oh, what did I say? <coughs> oh, Libby. Oh, Libby. Oh, Libby. Okay, because that's what I have. It was she both. Because okay. that's the same. would be in my report. thought I read wrong. Um, and then the Park District's also um, hiring for a number of positions right now. So these are open on our website. If anyone's interested in applying, applying we have um, a, a part-time customer service at the Sullivan Center. Um, part-time park maintenance, and then we have two full-time positions, a full-time athletic, uh, athletic field maintenance specialist, and a full-time custodian for the uh, Sullivan Center. So if anyone's interested in those positions, they can go to our uh, website, and then it's about us and employment to get to our online application system. Anyone have any questions? Any questions? 
Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda, Recreation Superintendent Tom Ritter. Good evening. Um, a few special events coming up this winter. The first one on the docket is this second annual uh, family New Year's Eve party. Uh, unfortunately, it's sold out. Thank you for all those who did register. We did have to reduce our maximum this year with the construction. Should be the last event affected by the construction, but um, first year was 250 people. We limited it to 150 this year, just to give everybody a good experience based on the capacities that we have. So that will be on, obviously, the 31st. The one thing we are adding to that event is when we do our countdown at 6 o'clock, uh, Jack added, is adding a balloon drop onto the dance floor. The kids should enjoy that. A couple hundred balloons. Uh, January 14th, Saturday the 14th, will be our fifth annual Winterfest. Winterfest is held from 11 to 2 over at Century Park North, and it's a free event, no registration, just show up. Uh, snow or no snow, cold or not cold, at this point I'm sure it's going to be cold and snowy the way we started, but you never know. Um, we have a lot of the same events we've done before. We have an ice sculpting uh, performance, we have dog sled demonstrations, uh, bonfire, campfire with uh, s'mores. The new addition to that event this year is the horse and buggy rides. They are free, we'll give people rides around the property. So, um, camel rides were <laughs> at the last event, Boy, not at this event. Jack like camels. I guess he does, I guess he does. Um, our craft, annual craft beer event, this will be our fourth one. Uh, we moved it a little bit later, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, we've noticed we have a couple similar events that have been held on the same date in the past. Uh, Libertyville has a, a wine event and Lake County has a craft beer event. So we're just trying to get away from that. So instead of a early February, we're doing our craft beer event on Saturday, March 11th. Um, fits right into our schedule very nicely too. So that's gonna be from five to nine. We'll continue to have live music, food, about 15 different breweries represented. They usually have about three different pours each. So there's 40 to 50 different flavors for people to, to decide what they want to sample. Um, it's $30. If you wait till the week of, it's 35. Designated drivers are welcomed for 15. Um, and our attendance has gone from 150 up to 266 over the three past years, respectively. So it's possible we could reach 300 if the numbers keep moving up. We'll see where we're going. But it's on, it's on a good track for its first, first three years. Uh, some programming, our basketball leagues um, have just begun. Um, we had our first games this past Saturday. There are 270 kids playing on 30 teams, which is a very strong number, but we've seen a decline in that each of the last two years. So I'm not sure, I don't want to blame it per se, but I'm not sure if uh, more travel opportunities exist that less kids are playing house. So that's something to look into. Like I said, it's a very strong number still, but last year we were around 320, so we're down 50 kids. So something we'll look at. And, Part of that evaluation process we're working on too, we'll see what kind of feedback we get. Generally, the feedback has still been very good, so I'm not sensing that people are dissatisfied with the program. But, um, and in our first and second grade program, which is only a few years old, there is still the opportunity to register for that. That starts in January as well. Uh, um, Mondays and Thursdays at the Sullivan Center, we, from October to March, we have a parent tot open gym. That continues to become more and more popular. Um, it's as simple as us putting out play equipment, uh, push toys, scooters, things for tots. And again, when you have a small child in the winter and you're looking for them to get some exercise, the gym has got all kinds of things for them to do on those two days. So Mondays and Thursday mornings from 8.30 to 10.30, please stop by the Sullivan Center. It's only $3, and if you come regularly, you can get a 10-punch pass for $25. Um, and that will be taking place on the Mondays after the holidays. We're not, we're not shutting it down. Um, from December 23rd to January 6th is when we'll be offering our discounted open gym rates for all the students that are back home from the holidays or high school or whatever. Anyone 18 and under that's a resident can pay $2. And that includes District 73 residents. Again, that's from the 23rd of December till January 6th. The schedule varies. We post a monthly uh, gym schedule. It's at the Sullivan Center. It's also on our website. So the December one, I believe, is already should be posted. Um, and then January, obviously, it might change a little bit. Um, as Jeff did mention, the warming shelter um, is open. Again, it's 1 to 9 p.m. Saturdays and Sundays uh, during the winter. And we have concessions, hot chocolate, coffee for sale, and again, free skate. I always want to say rental. Free loaning of the skates. 
for those that want to give ice skating a try. Sharpen skates. And sharpen skates. Yeah, we probably put in our, our skate sharpener to use for all those watching and go, those skates are so dull, they won't be this year. So um, the guys have been working on it all week to sharpen up the blades. And again, we are closed. Again, the weather permitting, the sled hill and ice rink will be open Christmas weekend, but we won't have the um, services available of the freeloader skates and, and concessions due to the holiday. Um, New Year's Day is normal, 1 to 9, but on New Year's Eve, it's only going to be from 1 to 5. We're just going to shut it down a little early. And then finally, just something to look forward to in our spring-summer brochure, which will be coming out soon. I'm sure Cheryl will talk about. Um, with the new gymnasium, we're going to uh, offer a floor hockey program, first and second grade, third and fourth grade, and see, see what kind of response we get. It'd be nice, perfect gym to, to set that up. So, and that's my report, unless there's any questions. Commissioner Kessler. Um, what is the uh, maximum am amount of people that can attend the craft career? Craft career. You know, as I was reading it, I think, I wonder if a commissioner is going to ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Uh, do you happen to know the capacity of the community room? I don't remember. I want to say like 400 or something. Or something. So if we get 3, 350, we, we are within, We're within the capacity okay. of that space, yes. If we get to 400, that's a good problem to have. Maybe we have to move it to a different facility or something. But or spread it amongst two gyms. Yeah, or spread, yeah, yeah, move it into gymnasium space in the future to get growth. I appreciate your sharpening the skates. Uh, is there any truth to the rumor that there are a bunch of tall skates in Morton Grove? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, inside joke. Thank you all very much. Excited about the agenda, Park Superintendent James Kim. Good evening. Um, just want to start with snow removal priorities, and I just want to tell all our patrons and residents at our facility, Sullivan, Lakeview, and Lashen, Central Park North and Hartman take priority. So if our paths aren't cleared immediately, uh, these are some of the reasons why. Um, we also take care of some school bus stops and walkways, um, so those we take priority over paths. Um, the sled, sled hill and ice rink light times are approximately 4.30 to like 9.45. So if anyone is inquiring about that, uh, the sled hill will be open officially as long as there's about 90% of the hill is covered. There will be two ice rinks, uh, one on the sand volleyball court and one on the basketball court. The one on the basketball court is we will allow hockey to be played. We put up some uh, very thick plastic boards along the liner so that it cannot be ripped. And we will put up one hockey goal, um, but we will not allow full ice hockey games to be played as there's not actual bang boards for kids to hit each other up against. Um, uh, family Aquatic Center filter replacement is underway. Everything was shipped to the Family Aquatic Center filter room before the snow hit. So the uh, contractor is working hard on getting everything fit together dry and then they're going to start cutting PVC piping and start putting stuff together. Um, the pump is in, they've actually hooked up the pump and started it for a quick second, so electrically it's, it's working fine. Um, Permanent Environmental Committee, well, on Monday I am scheduled to meet along with the US EPA and the Illinois EPA downtown in regards to the Sullivan Woods Wetland Research Project that we are looking to continue on, um, meeting with Wetland Research, the Village of Vernon Hills would be Dave Brown mainly, uh, Lake County Public Works, North Shore Water Reclamation District, and the Des Plaines Watershed Group. And we're looking at the production of water quality credits and um, how, if we qualify, how much we qualify for, and how to fund our project without asking for money up front. Um, so we're looking at developers who are affecting, are affecting wetlands and they need to mitigate and rebuild or find a place to restore wetlands, and that's how we would fund this project um, and maintain it as well uh, for many years. Unfortunately, uh, the money's not always available right away, so it is a long process for this. Executive Director Pujol? Uh Just to just add to James, uh, we, have, we have allocated some funds in our capital plan to do some clearing. Uh, and we're going to work with the village on that. And that would be kind of the first phase of this, is just to get rid of some of that invasive uh, product all along. Uh, not unlike the Savannah that we did, but just uh, kind of giving the board a heads up on that. I know we, 
we took a little bit of some uh, uh, some comments from some of the residents in that area about what we do at the Savannah. Before we do anything on this, we will be bringing um, Wetland Research, which is uh, Kathy Pop and Don Hay. Kathy used to work for the county. She's been here presenting to our board in the past, basically on just uh, analysis of, of uh, both Big and Little Bear Lake. Um, so these two are experts within it. We will have them present to the board what they're looking at doing. James's attendance at this meeting downtown uh, is just all the players that they're getting involved so that there's, there's complete buy-in in terms of the restoration of that site. Having said that, when we invite Don and Kathy back, you'll see, and this is one of those things, that it could be um, challenging for some of the residents along that property line to look at because those trees are gonna go away essentially if, if we pursue this project. And so people's backyards, half the property owners are Long Grove residents and the other half are Vernon Hills residents, are gonna see something out their backyard that may just become very virgin-like. Um, uh, and it'll take time before it you know, comes back a little bit. So just kind of, kind of a heads up on that. In the interim, we do plan sometime probably next year, like this time next year when the weather's cold and the ground's frozen, it's a good creek kind of time for us to do some clearing. The village is gonna help us do that. Um, we worked with Will Rockwell, who's a GIS coordinator from the village, to do some drone filming. He's, he's actually a licensed and certified drone operator. They bought a drone in the village. They're buying a much nicer one with a nicer camera. Um, I'm happy to share those that, that video footage that Will did for you. But when you take the whole path of Sullivan Woods from a perspective of maybe 100 feet, there's a lot, a lot of debris, um, you know, a lot of fallen trees, and so it's it's harmful to you know to the wild, to the fish, to just any of the um, the water flow, the water quality. So that's one of the things we gotta, you know, we're gonna probably start with is just clearing that out, cleaning it up. Um, I think one of the great projects the village did, if you go over by, um, oh, it's over at Melody. Hawthorne Melody in Table Time. Yeah, it, it's up a Butterfield Road and it comes up to, I don't know what the name of that, that drive is, uh, that first street that Hawthorne Melody is off of. Hazel. Hazel, Hazel Time, yeah. Hazel Time. They did this probably four or five years ago. It's a beautiful project. And, and that's essentially what, you know, that's what we'd love it to look like along the shoreline. Um, and, you know, our investment is, you know, one of those that, that's the thing I gotta know from this group. I, you know, if we're gonna spend 100K to do a clearing, I can do that with the village, but I can't spend, you know, obviously seven figures to get involved in a project like this without all these other players greenlighting it. And so ultimately the US EPA and the IEPA are gonna be the main uh, decision makers on whether they see it. This is a pilot project for Lake County. We've been asked, we've been selected to do this. Um, so we're really in kind of the first really just talking stages of things. And once we get kind of some momentum, then I'll have them come before the board. And that may be as, as early as our January meeting. So, sorry James, if we have anything else. Are there any questions on the, from the board on that? No. Back to you, James. Mm -hmm. okay. um, one last thing, uh, part of the spring summer brochures are free Earth Day events on February 20, February, Friday, April 21st. <laughs> um, actual Earth Day is Saturday the 22nd. Uh, we're gonna have this from 4.30 to 6.30 p.m. at the maintenance shop. Um, we've got a lot of sponsorships that Jessica Mitchell has uh, gotten for us. And so we're just continuing to work on making it something for kids and adults to educate them about the environment and um, trying to get a lot of people involved. The village is, is gonna have a table, Swapo's gonna have a table, uh, Lake County Public Works said they would come in, I have NICOR, ComEd, um, some other groups that are gonna have tables and we're just gonna have a free event for our community. And uh, that concludes my report. Any questions for James? Thank you very much. Marketing and Communication Manager, Cheryl Beeman. Cheryl. Good evening. The spring-summer brochure and a camp guide are both being worked on um, right now. 
It is scheduled to be mailed the week of February 20th, and just as a reminder, the camp guide is inserted into the spring summer guide. Um, the new um, way that camp's going to be, the two weeks and the four weeks and all that, um, it's gonna be written out and explained to our residents how that's working, and also each page will really showcase each camp and explain to them the two weeks and four weeks and how the buses work for all of them. So we're working on and trying to do a really good job of explaining that because it's brand new this year. We're working with Tom a lot on that, making sure we're all on the same page, explaining it well. Um, today, um, a community newsletter went out. We are waiting just to get the final, uh, the final um, information for a, a new event that's not in our brochure. It's called Keep Warm and Try On. It's a 30-day indoor triathlon at Lakeview from January 1st through the 31st. And um, people, participants will swim 83 laps. They'll bike, let's see do I think they have this here. Um, they're gonna bike 150 miles and they're going to run or walk 26 miles on a treadmill or their personal pedometer. And it's just a way to get people to move indoors. They have a month. They're going to track their progress on their own on big charts. It's only $10 for members who are currently members of Lakeview and it's $49 for non-members, and that includes a 30-day pass in their in their price. So that just went out today to the community through a community newsletter, and we'll just start promoting it through our social media also. Um, we had two specials. I, ho I hope I'm not taking your <laughs> We do a lot of advertising for Lakeview. Uh, we had two um, specials that we did really solely through social media. We wanted to see how it would work our Facebook mostly. We did our Black Friday, which was online um, and inside uh, the Lakeview. Um, it was for personal training, and 29 packages were sold that way. It was, they can only purchase it on Black Friday. And then a few days later on Cyber Monday, we did a membership, a 20% off, and they could only purchase that through our online. Um, and they had 31 memberships. So that was our first time trying that solely through social media and, and on our website. We didn't do any other type of advertising to see if people were really looking at it. And so they were, so that was a good good start for that. Um, also, we have um, a Lakeview membership special coming up, January one through nine, 10% off if anybody um, purchases a membership only for new members. So we have advertising going up for that currently. Um, before the Christmas break next week, we'll have a flyer go out to all the schools with our after school admission program, the Spanish on one side and English on the other side to get ready for when the kids come back after the break. Here's my report for the evening. Sorry. Any questions for Cheryl? Cheryl, I got a question regarding sure. the website. The, the amount of sessions. Is there a reason we're seeing such a downtick even through September, you know, January oh, through, right. I'm sorry? Oh, go ahead, yes. J January through June, we're 19, 13, 12,000. I understand May, July, we, you know, everybody's out and about. Mm -hmm. I would have expected to pick up more in August, September. Is there? Well, it's the same as, I, I usually compare it so I can write something different, it was different. Um, same thing happened last year, and I, I believe what we spoke about last year with staff was that um, people are really getting ready for school. Okay. So they're not, if we had the same, it's really followed suit that for the last couple of years we've been tracking this. Um, not much difference in the amount of changes, you know, uh, the fluctuations, but it was a low time last year too. And we, we thought it was just for parents and getting their kids ready for school mm -hmm. and not really, you know, the pool's closed. Nothing's really, you know, the, the kids' basketball leagues and all that's not starting yet. So it's kind of a downtime. Interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Cheryl? Next item on the agenda. Agenda, Lakeview Fitness Supervisor, Mark Purcell. Mark? Good evening. Cheryl did steal some of my Sorry. thunder, which is fine. Um, <laughs> the personal training promotion, I thought, went pretty well. We have, um, we've assigned them to all of our trainers, and the intent is that, you know, people will get um, a little bit fitter, but also they'll form a connection with their trainer, so hopefully they'll, you know, want to continue on, you know, either with the membership and or with, you know, personal training. So I think it was a good success even though we found that many of the people still came in because they have a comfort level of standing in front of somebody and signing up rather than doing it in a way. Um, 
We also have um, a promotion that's kind of mirroring what the open gym is at Sullivan. Um, there's been some discussion about having an open swim equivalent for it. So again, from December 23rd through January 6th, we're having an open swim promotion where it's $5 per individual or $10 for a family of four to come in and swim using the pool during open swim hours. Again, much like at Sullivan, just refer to the, the website, it'll show the open swim hours for December, and we'll post the January schedule um, towards the end of the month. Uh, you might remember we had the 100 days promotion that started September 1st. You had 100 visits to use in about seven months. We had our first person reach 100 days earlier, um, I believe it was that last week. And I went back and looked at his visits. He came every single day, which is pretty amazing. <coughs> so he ended up getting a $50 um, gift card. Um, but some of the other things, we kind of some fun things planned uh, today. We ended up having a vendor that we had met through Jessica. So she donated um, 10 10 minute massages that we sent out an email to all 600 of the people in the uh, promotion. Well, as you can expect, it was quite a response. <laughs> so the first 10 in got it. So, you know, it was unexpected, but it was a, a nice for the, the vendor because they're gonna get, you know, maybe some traffic, but the members got a, a free 10 minute massage, which was you know, kind of nice. Um, and then one of the things, Andre, that really is pertinent towards the holidays is, um, uh, Robert Wood, he's kind of brought a um, promotion, not promotion, but a, a cause to us, the backpacks for the homeless. And it's been, he said he's tripled the amount of backpacks since last year. They were able to collect and they're still doing it. Every time I go through the lobby, he's got to empty it because the box is overflowing, much like the Toys for Tots box. So I think it's going to be a very wor worthwhile project that, um, you know. Almost 200, <laughs> correct, right? You said <laughs> somewhere around 200 backpacks that they plan on distributing. Nice. And I'm not sure that even included what we just raised at the holidays. I don't think it does. Employee appreciation for the yeah. So probably even more. So it's a very worthwhile project. And I think he's, you know, it's going to make an impact both here and in Chicago. And that's yes. very important. And, I, you know, and if he's, he's looking for volunteers still if people want to help. I know he mentioned he's doing it the day after Christmas, the 26th. He's got about 10 or 12 people signed on right now. And they're just going into the city and they literally walk the streets. They're also going to go up into uh, North Chicago and uh, Waukegan area uh, as well in Lake County and do some distribution. <coughs> I just lo I, I love it. I think it's a great, great thing that so one of our young staff members took this initiative to do this. It's really taken off. It's oh, really he started it? On him and a friend. Oh, I think last year was the first year. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Mark, just one question um, regarding the, the numbers. We have how many camps of members? I'm guessing it's a typo. It's not. And it's one of the things that's somewhat confusing is because of our changeover from Rec Track to Max Galaxy, there were some some memberships that were, you know, we were entering these people during the course of months over the summer. We found that to make corrections, you had to cancel the membership and then resell it rather than just being able to change the membership. So basically, it's counting double. You cancel one and you sell it all over again. Okay. So it's kind of a pass through. That's why the number looks kind of confusing. Okay. So that new renew is part of that the 361. The only way to really do it in the new software is you can't you can't make a change. You have to cancel it and then resell it. So it's kind of doubling up the number. Okay. Understand. So then, should we have the that line item C be separated to the new and the renew? I can do that if you like. Well, that'd be nice to know how many new people we're getting in, I think. That makes sense, yeah. yeah. And I know we're still working on some of the, re like one of the things the software does not do, mm -hmm. as we talked to the director, it can't give you the, you know, you get, say you have 14,000 visits in a month, you can't get the exact how many unique people came, which I think is a more valuable number, because you want to see how many of your members are actually right. coming. Um, Kathy has told me that the, the next revision of Max Galaxy is hopefully coming sometime in January, where they're hoping that some of the things that we've been requesting along with some of their other clients will allow us to, you know, do more tracking and provide you with more information on membership. Very good. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is Commissioner of Committee Reports and Communication. Commissioner Kessler. Okay. I'd like to fill us in on the school board meeting you attended the other night. Sure. Well, we attended. We attended. Uh, Dave Dorhoffer and I attended the meeting on Tuesday. 
um, a very, um, I'm sorry, on Monday, a very long meeting. Um, it began with uh, residents getting up and expressing their concerns um, over, well, let me back up. The topic was how to handle all the overcrowding they have at the school. They've been having surveys out. Um, they were then presented with two options, narrowing it down from three down to two. Uh, as I said, residents uh, that spoke about their concerns they had, the board listened to everything. Um, and then they started uh, kind of debating what those options are and how they should be handling it. They, um, I mean, the, the board obviously has not made any decisions. They're still uh, back and forth on, on evaluating these pros and cons. They seem to lean towards um, wanting to go and add on to the Sullivan Center to help with the overcrowding. They, I think that was, seemed to be unanimous on the board that that was one of the uh, first ways of addressing the overcrowding. Uh, but again, there's, there's a lot of work that they still need to do and evaluate uh, on what their options are. Um, what else am I missing? They, and they were looking at the tax implications uh, that would come about with it. So I think that the board is really taking <coughs> everything into consideration, how to address the, the needs, how to, how to handle the, the possible increase in taxes for the referendum. Um, if they go to referendum, just th there's a lot, n no decisions, but a lot of good information and I felt that the, the board has a big job in front of them. Thank you very much for attending, appreciate it. Next item on the agenda is new business, uh, ordinance 6-16, tax levy ordinance. Could I have a motion to approve ordinance 6-16 for the levy and assessment of the taxes for the year 2016? So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Moline? Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Commissioner Ballou? Yes. Commissioner Kessler? Yes. President Dorhoffer? Yes. Next item on the agenda is the Sullivan Center change order to 005. <coughs> uh, unfortunately, W.B. Olson, John is unable to join us tonight. So do you I'm want to handle it? I tried texting, I didn't get a response. So it's going to be here. You want you or James to handle the verbiage? I can handle it. All right. Yeah. Would you like to explain to us why they're asking for the change? Yeah. So the, well, it's explained there in terms of undercut of existing parking lot improvements. This is the area that uh, hugs the drive as you come in off of Aspen, basically the main road going in. So. The majority of the area that had to be undercut uh, is what's undercut. You now it's basically putting it's it's digging out, laying some additional drainage and piping that they were concerned about uh, because off the preschool wing there's some there's a decline, if you will. Uh, we've got a fence. They were concerned. Then there's a sidewalk. Then there's a little bit of I think it's what four feet wide that area and then there's a road so they wanted us to basically tear all that up lay some additional the first they wanted to put a fence they wanted us to put a secondary fence in and we were able to kind of dance around that James now is talking about we're just going to fill it we're going to seat it we're going to blanket it we're going to look to put some landscaping in it and they were that that was sufficient this was not part of the original scope uh, Gowald Hamilton our civil um, did not have this in their original plans. Uh, this was unforeseen. It's very soft under this on the subsurface. Did you catch that? Yeah. It's an unforeseen. Okay. Yeah. So when we when we did the design, there was no way to really um, inherently tell. It was a request by the village and a lot of the inspectors through the village for us to put this in. So um, that's probably the short of it. Uh, John would probably give you a little more detail uh, in terms of just how it was applied. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I'm missing, James. Well, when uh, the inspector came out, he requested a dump truck full of s stone to drive over the subsurface, and he sunk three inches. So that was um, that was the inspector's proof that they needed to yeah. undercut and refill. And then he tested it again, and he was fine. And then they went. 
and went another 20 feet over and it did it again so they had to undercut again and that's the area of the parking lot kind of by the gym as yes. well um that we're talking about in addition to that we had to i, I think i had you out there one day dave that we were, we were walking it and, and, and showing with that but um i think we had to keep so that's it's a change order that's outside of the scope um so i would uh it, the, the work is already done uh, you know so it's not something we could have held off on but from a timing standpoint, you guys haven't met. Until we just did it, like you know, within the last couple of weeks. So, uh, hopefully, that answers any questions of the board. Could I have a motion to approve change order number five for WBO in the amount of thirty-nine thousand nine hundred twenty-nine dollars and thirty cents to perform the undercutting and existing park lot improvements? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> Roll call, please. Commissioner Kessler. Yes. Commissioner Moline? Yes. Commissioner Ballou? Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. President Dorhoffer? Yes. Next item on the agenda is the WW Granger invoice. Can I have a motion to approve the WW Granger invoice uh, in the amount of $189.72? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? Roll call. Commissioner Moline? Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Commissioner Ballou? Yes. Commissioner Kessler? Yes. President Dorhoffer? Abstain. Commissioner Commons, Commissioner Blue, welcome back. Thank you very much. I have nothing other than happy holidays. <laughs> Commissioner Moline. Happy holiday. Commissioner Robbins. Happy and a healthy new year to everybody. Commissioner Kessler. Uh, ditto. Good greetings. And uh, likewise for myself, have a great one, have a safe one, and we'll see you in 2017. Uh, with this, next item on the agenda is closed session under section 2C6. Setting the price for sale or lease of property owned by the district, could I have a motion to go into closed session pursuant to section 2C6, setting a price of sale, a uh, price for sale or lease of property owned by the district? So moved. Second. Uh, in this uh, closed session, we will have Commissioner Blue, Commissioner Moline, Commissioner Robbins, Commissioner Kessler, myself, and Executive Director Fruger. Roll call, please. Commissioner Blue. Yep. Commissioner Kessler? Yes. Commissioner Robbins? Yes. Commissioner Molini? Yes. President Dorhoffer? Yes. We are adjourned to closed session.